शिशिरादा गोविंद माधव की जय श्री कृष्ण बलराम की जाए गोन थाय की जाए लपरिशियों दो श्री सीता देवी की परिशियों दी अपरेंस दे ऑफ श्री धनवा देवी की दी दिस अपरेंस दे ऑफ श्री मधुपम देव की स्वागत हम स्वागत हम वेलकम हरे कृष्णा ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम ज्ञान दासनंदना शलखया चक्षु मिलिता ये नाथ स्माय श्री गुरव नम श्री शैतान्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापिता नूतले स्वयं रूपा कदा मैं ददति स्वपदिख वंदेहम श्री गुरु श्रीयुता पदकमल श्री गुरु वैष्णव सा श्री रूपा सगरजथम सहगना रघुनाथ दिथम थम सं जीवम भक्तिथम सलदुथम हरिजन सहित कृष्णा शैतन्या देवं श्रीराधा कृष्णपद सहगन ललिता श्री विशखम विथम हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधु दीनाबंधु जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते तकने गौरांगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी ईशा बनु सुथे देवी फनमी हरि प्रिय वंशकल्पाथरुजा कृपा सिंधुव्या पचीता पवनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण शैतान्य प्रभु निचनंद श्री आदवैथागदा शिवास गौरभक्त वृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम 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 हरे हरे सो बिफोर आई स्टार्ट आई वुड लाइक टू ऑफर माय प्रणाम टू ऑल ऑफ यू एंड प्रोप्रिशिएट योर ब्लेसिंग्स स्पेशली फ्रॉम सीनियर डिवोटीज सो आई कैन स्पीक अप सम वर्ड्स सो टुडे इज द यस प्रभु so <laughs> today i take the perm- your permission to discuss about those three great personalities uh, shrimati satsita devi and if time allows perhaps shrimati janava devi and shila madhu pandit well, of course time permits provided time permits So let's start with in terms of seniority and Treta Yuga Shrimati Sita Devi is coming from Treta Yuga time so should i translate in french or probu tu vas tu vas faire raja dharma est-ce qu'il y a des gens des gens qui parlent pas du tout anglais ah oui d'accord donc il faut quand i have to translate <laughs> Okay. So Ramadi murti shukalani aminatishtan. Uh, we know from Brahma Samhita that Shri Ram Shri Ram is Purna Ejriya Bhagwan. After Lord Krishna Shri Ram comes next. Uh, as well as Lord Nishingadev on the same footing. Lord Ram and Lord Nishingadev. Donc on va parler de Shrimati Sita Devi et bien sûr on peut pas parler d'elle sans ignorer son illustre illustre mari effectivement Ramadi Murti Shukalani Aminatishtan son mari n'est nul autre que Shri Ram le seigneur suprême Shri Vishnu après Shri Krishna la personne la personnalité de Dieu qui arrive en second plan si je peux dire bien que tout tout soit un tout est advayam gyan tout est 
Advaita, les formes de Dieu ne sont jamais seconde, troisième, quatrième, elles sont une. Anantarupam. So, la personne qui vient juste après Krishna, c'est le Seigneur Ram, ainsi que le Seigneur de Shingirev, d'ailleurs, qui est around the corner, <laughs> mais false. So, yes, uh, let's discuss about Shimati Sita Devi. So, she's the daughter of the earth, Bumi Devi. Uh, we have to understand that on the spiritual plane, Everything is, there's no time and space. Whatever we are used to in this three-dimensional world, it is possible, it is not possible. It's totally irrelevant in the spiritual world. So when we say Sita Devi, she comes from the earth, this planet, what we see of the planet is just the gross aspect of the planet. But behind each and everything, there is a person. So this planet is a de demigoddess. Right? Her name is Bumi. And she's the, do she's the mother of Sita Devi. Donc, traduction, effectivement, on, on, a, on aperçoit les, les choses avec notre vision limitée. Atmavan, Magnate, Jagat, on ne perçoit pas vraiment les choses. Derrière cette planète, il y a une déesse qui s'appelle Bumi. Bumi Devi. Et donc, c'est la mère de Sita Devi. Et elle est l'une des figures centrales dans le Ramayana. C'est écrit par Valmiki Muni. Elle est written by Valmiki Muni. She is called Sita. There's a beautiful verse describing her glory. Sita Ayak Charitam Mahat. And it's called the Maha Ramayana is called like this. This is the noble story of Sita. Ramayana is sur surrounding around Mother Sita. And we know that this story has been sung by Valmiki. And Sita Devi is, who is Sita Devi? Is she a human lady? Is she a Jiva Tattva? What do you think? Uh, she is expansion of Shimati Radharani, Ladini Shakti. So, Parasya Shakti Vividva Shriyate Svabhaviki Gana Bala Kriyacha. Krishna is, Lord Krishna is endowed with so many Shaktis, innumerable Shaktis, and the Mula Prakriti, and the Mula Prakriti means the root Shakti is Shimati Radharani, Ladini Shakti. And Sita Devi is an expansion of Shimati Radharani. So we know the story, it's a beautiful story. What's the meaning of Sita? Literally, Sita. You know, when you plow a land, especially in those days, they had a, you have to create a furrow in the field. You have, it's called plowing the land. That act of plowing is called Sita in Sanskrit. So her father, who is? Zanaka. Uh, he found, as he was actually himself plowing the land, why would he plow the land himself? He's a king. Because he wanted to plow the land to make a clear space to perform a big yagya. So he figured that as the king, it is my duty to myself make the, the, that space ready, readily, to perform later yagya on it. So that's why he himself volunteered to plow the land and uh, this daughter, this great lady, the concert of Raghuram, Raghupati, Raghava, Rajaram, bedecked with shining. Can you imagine? She's not an ordinary little girl. She was bedecked with shining gem ornaments. And when ladies, you have children, do they appear like this? Uh, you know when, how they appear. So, I mean, my son, I remember, I, I was shocked. He appeared he had no tra traces of blood. It's amazing. Of course, he came out from the other way, from, you know, Caesarean. Donc, ce que je disais, c'est que euh, cette, c'est une, une uh, concert. Hein? She's uh, an energy of the Lord. 
elle est apparue du, comment dirais-je, du sillon de la terre. Un sita veut dire le sillon de la terre. Lorsqu'on passe la charrue dans les champs, on crée des sillons. Elle est apparue de ce sillon. En fait, sillon, c'est sita en sanskrit. Donc elle est apparue totalement décorée à merveille. Et la prière, est, on la connaît, la prière. S'il vous plaît, c'est à dire, protégez-moi dans ma vie spirituelle. C'est la même prière que l'on offre à Shimati Ladalani. You are the wind that destroys the clouds of demons. You are the wind that destroys like the hundred-headed raven. Actually, Sita, I don't know if you know that in Ramayan. I'm reading Ramayan now. There's, there was a time when they were in exile that at times they used to run into hermitages, you know, like they run across the hermitage of Agatsya, of Atrimuni. And at one point, those three great souls, Lord Ram, Lord Sri Lakshman, they came to a small hermitage in the thick of the forest, out of nowhere, tiny little hermitages, inhabited by great souls, Agatya Muni. They are Manasaputra of Lord Brahma. They, they were residing in Tritayug, still in their hermitages. So what happened is, Agatya Muni welcomed his host, because Atiti Siva, you know, when we have hosts that come out of the blue, Yes, guests, sorry, the other way around. <laughs> Thank you. When we have guests coming out of the blue, we have to welcome them even more than God himself. Especially if they are at ETI, if they are un unexpected. So Agatha Muni, of course, he knew deep inside this is the supreme personality of God, and he welcomed him very nicely, and Lakshman also. And Sita, because they are engaged into man's talk, she just wandered off in the Hermitage. And she came within the Hermitage, in, within a small ashram, and she ventured inside. C'est vrai, il faut que je traduise ça. Donc, ce que je disais, c'est que je relate un événement qui vient du Ramayan. J'ai la, la miséricorde de pouvoir lire le Ramayan en ce moment. Donc c'est très absorbant le Ramayan. Et lors de leur pérégrination, on sait qu'ils ont été en exil. Ils arrivent dans l'ashram d'Agatia Muni, perdu au fin fond de la forêt. Et là, Agatia Muni va les recevoir. Et Sita va donc visiter d'elle-même l'ashram. Elle est toute seule, elle visite. Elle va arriver dans un petit ashram tout petit. Et là, elle va s'apercevoir qu'il y a une énergie très spéciale dans cet ashram, une énergie négative. Et en fait, il y a un Shila qui est là. Et bien sûr, c'est la, la fille de, de Mboumi en personne. Elle s'aperçoit que sous cet ashram regorge de l'énergie de Ravan. Elle ressent la présence de Ravan dans ces lieux. Non seulement ça, mais l'esprit de Ravan règne dans ce lieu. Et non seulement ça, mais l'esprit de Ravan va essayer de accaparer l'esprit de Sita. Elle se sent comme envoûtée. Back to English. <laughs> I know you're good in French, you should follow. <laughs> So what happened as she entered that little ashram within the hermitage of Agatha Muni, she can feel some negative presence, you know. It's, she can see a Lord Shiva's she, uh, linga is there. It's very clean, but there's some negative energy in there. Of course, she's herself the daughter of Bumi. And Little does it take for her to figure out that actually Ravan is there. The, the spirit of Ravan is all-pervading this place. 
And not only that, but very soon she feels his presence trying to engulf her, to take hold of her psyche. And she tries to shrug it off, obviously. But Ravan is very powerful. The spirit of Ravan is there. She cries for help. No, and no, no sound comes out of her mouth. And she cried for help. One sage came in, inside, one of the close friends of Agassiz Muni. He comes inside and he has heard some commotion, so he comes about and he inquires, are you all right? She speaks out, but she, he cannot hear. She has been taken over by the spirit of the man. And he just, he figures to himself, everything is fine, and he walks away. So she is left with the spirit of Ravan in her. And she acts as a human lady, and we know that, and that's her prerogative. But now she retrieves her Sita, fearful form of goddess of the earth. She's the daughter. She exhibits an incredible Shakti. And to make a long story short, the earth cracked open in this little ashram and the shila of Shiv disappears inside. And also that energy disappears inside. She has the power. Herself, she has the power to kill Ravan. She doesn't need her husband, Lord Ram. She's so powerful. And shortly after that, who's coming in the picture? Lord Ram and Lakshman, because they have been, you know, they talk with Agatya for a while and then they, they moved about the ashramas themselves and they figured out where did she go? And then they just came inside the ashram just after that happened. And implicitly they know she's the mother of the universe. She's Bhushakti herself, one of the main energy of the Lord, Lord Vishnu. But just to tell you that she has the power to tackle Ravan. We should not be thinking that she needs Ram. She needs Ram as because she's the lady, she's a concert. But in and of herself, she can easily manage Ravan. Donc, vous avez compris ce que j'ai dit en français? Faut que je traduise. <laughs> ok, très bon. <laughs> Donc. Ce que je disais, c'est que dans ce petit ashram au sein de l'ermitage de Agatiamuni, elle va déployer une puissance inouïe. Et elle va absorber cette, cette énergie, non seulement en elle, mais la terre va se craquer, ça va engouffrer le Shila du Seigneur Shiv et engouffrer Ravan, l'esprit le, puissant de Ravan. Ça va l'engouffrer dans, ce, dans cet abysse. Donc imaginez la puissance de Sita. So, he found her in the casket, as I told you the story. She had a daughter, she had a sister, Umila, who later will marry one of the Chateau Vyoha, the other, I guess, Lakshman. He, she will marry Lakshman. So these two daughters were brought up in great affection by the royal couple, uh, King Janak. King Janak is himself a Mahajana. Krishna says in the Gita, what does he say about King Janak in the Gita? What is the, he glorifies King Janak in which terms? Yeah, in the third chapter, Lord Krishna glorifies King Janak, he has attained full perfection by the proper accomplishment of his prescribed duties, Kama Yoga. So we can see through Kama Yoga, this King Janak is the emblem of success in the realm of Kama Yoga. He has attained full perfection. Of course, he's a Vishnu Parika, he's an eternal companion of the Lord. So this couple gave them proper education, beautiful ladies, very noble good behavior, intelligence. They endear themselves to all, to all in the kingdom of Mithila. Uh, Mithila is 
the name of the kingdom. Very well known for her beauty, a noble character, totally absorbed in the deity of, Su of the Lord, in the Soya Vamsh. Uh, there's two dynasties in this world, in this universe, Soya Vamsh, Chandra Vamsh, uh, dynasty of the moon, dynasty of the, of the sun. Donc, pour revenir au français, effectivement, ces deux filles, Rumila, sa sœur aussi, va naître, tout, ce sont des personnages totalement divins. Ils vont être éduqués par leurs parents, qui sont eux-mêmes des, des compagnons éternels de Vishnu. Elles regorgent de beauté, de qualité, de noblesse, de pureté. Elle adore bien sûr, elle adore, elle adore Krishna, Vishnu, dans, en, en, en termes de deity worship. And of course, just to tell you the power of this little lady, When she was young, Lord Parashuram happened to visit Janak. And he just laid his bow at the entrance of the palace. <laughs> And he took, you know, the, he, he wanted to see for himself Lord, Lord King Janak. And they talked for a while, the great personalities. And when he came out, the bow is gone. And little, just down the, path, the lane, she can, you can see that little girl playing with the ball. <laughs> so, that ball, just to, recall, just to remind you, it takes 300 men to, to carry that ball. Uh, it is the ball that Parashuram was using, and originally it came from Lord Shiva. Uh, later down the road, you will see at the bistro, bistro, your bistro pole of Lady Sita, it took 300 men to carry the ball. The little girl is playing with it as, as a toy. So Parashuram could be held, could be held, behold the scene. And he told her, this is not ordinary lady. You have to, you better arrange properly her bestrode hall. Uh, you arrange it, a divine personality will come to fetch her, no one else. Uh, so it was predicted and everything. And of course the challenge is there, it's called Svayamvara Yagya. Uh, all the princes, the pretenders, will come about to get the hand of this lady. And there was a challenge, someone has to at least string the ball. Just that itself was a feat. Whoever would be able to string the ball, will get the, the, the hands of Sita. We know the story. Uh, what did Krishna, Lord, Lord Ram, did do? What did he do? Qu'est-ce qu'il a fait, le Seigneur Ram? Uh, donc l'idée, c'est que il a cassé. Uh, non seulement elle avait porté dans sa jeunesse cet arc comme une petite fille, c'est l'arc du Seigneur Shiva, ça, 300 personnes pour porter l'arc. 300 personnes, 300 hommes pour porter l'arc. Elle, elle joue avec, avec cet arc comme un, comme un jouet. Plus tard, Parashura va dire à, à son père, Janak, il est important de monter la barre très haut pour elle, hein, parce que c'est une personnalité divine. Et seulement celui qui pourra bander cet arc pourra obtenir sa main. We know the, the feat the tour de force performed by Lord Ram, not only did he string the ball, he broke the ball, just like a bamboo, like a sugar cane, bamboo. The, the twang of the ball was so powerful, the whole earth trembled. And this is divine personality. Yeah. So, To make a long story short, because we have only one hour, we know the whole story. Uh, there was a plot organized by KKE, actually organized by Montara, to be honest. Uh, Montara, in a previous life, had been an Apsara, and she got cursed. And she was meant to disturb the plan of the Lord, but for a higher purpose. 
What was the purpose? What, what was the overall purpose of Lord Ram being banished in the forest? If we have the full picture, as we know, the Ramayana, what was the overall purpose? Lord, why Lord Ram was banished and etc. etc. What, what is the intent behind? Yes. To, there's many false reasons, actually. Many false reasons. Donc, les, la question que je pose, c'est, on va rentrer dans l'histoire et on va accélérer un petit peu. On sait très bien que Sita va se marier au Seigneur Ram, avec toute la cour d'Acharat va venir à Mithila, organiser, pas organiser, mais participer au mariage. Les quatre frères vont être mariés, non seulement à Urmila, mais aux cousines aussi. Ce n'est pas juste Sita et Ram. Les quatre frères sont mariés ce jour-là aussi. Ensuite, retour au palais. Et là, pendant des années, c'est le fast inouï, c'est happy, happy life, tout va bien. Dashara vieillit comme tout le monde. Il est temps d'introniser Ram. On connaît l'intrigue. Mantara, précédemment, une Apsara dans sa vie passée, elle avait été maudite pour participer à la chute dans sa vie future, elle participera à la chute de l'Empire. Ma question, c'est quel est le but Pourquoi toute cette histoire Quelle est la finalité Quelles sont les raisons Pourquoi ce bannissement Pourquoi cette injustice apparente So again, the question remains, why all this Why this intrigue Why this banishment, un, unfair, unjust banishment? There's nothing without a cause, right? What is the overall, overarching reason behind it all? Please. The pleasure of uh, the Lord and of his leader. Yes, that's definitely comes one of the first reasons. I thank you, Prabhu. You set the ball rolling. <laughs> Did you hear? Donc Prabhu a dit, déjà, pour commencer, pour permettre au divertissement du Seigneur de se dévoiler, de se unfold, hein, de, pour qu'il puisse se, se dévoiler, se révéler. Voilà, c'est tout à fait vrai. Le lila, de, la, lila Shakti, hein, Lila Shakti est une énergie, elle veut elle veut divertir le Seigneur suprême. Donc, elle organise des lilas pour son divertissement. This is very good reason. Number two, autre raison. Oui, Prabhu. Ramachandra will show his love for Sita and thus he will show the world that he loves her. That's what you're saying? Okay. Yeah, he wants to exhibit his love for Sita. Now I can be the devil's advocate to that. And that also served, this served him in one sense. What you're saying is true. But in one sense, it, that deserved him. You say deserved him, that this created disservice to him. In the sense, people may conclude his impact. Laymen will say, well, he's so impact. He loves his wife so much. He's, he's shedding tears. And it's true, he shed tears. He was totally disorientated when she, she was gone, remember? Connect to Ramayana. So then people will say, well, God himself is impact by woman. So how to counteract this argument? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, as a God himself, to show the behavior of a perfect human being within the dharma of Varnashra, obeying to his father, uh, taking care of his wife and his citizens. Yeah. Donc je traduis. Voilà, ça c'est Maria Dada pour le chat. Donc, le point de Prabhu Gopaswami, c'est de, effectivement, il veut établir le dharma, en quoi 
premièrement, Ekapatni, une épouse, même Dieu là-dessus, c'est rester fidèle à son vœu, Ekapatni, et non seulement montrer le fils prodigue, le mari idéal, le fils idéal, le régent idéal, il est l'idéal personnifié, le Seigneur Ram. Il n'y a pas de faute, il n'y a pas de, de blémish, il n'y a pas de tâche. Les, les profanes vont trouver des tâches dans la vie de, du Seigneur Krishna, qui sont totalement irrelevant, qui sont totalement incongrues. Mais il n'empêche que Krishna est lila pour le chuta. Ram est mariada pour le chuta. Donc c'est vrai, il a raison Prabhu, c'est pour établir une pureté, un idéal absolu. Ram est l'idéal absolu en tant que Dieu. Now there's another reason that Prabhupada pinpoints in his purport in, in that section of the Bhagavatam. We, you may say it's a sub poem, Prabhu, but I don't, I mean, it's there. We, can, we, have, to, we have to acknowledge. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, you're jumping again very high. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that. That's not the one I was thinking of. Mine is very low compared to that. <laughs> yes, Prabhu. Donc, je vais traduire parce qu'il y a quand même deux, trois dévots qui ne comprennent pas. Le, le point de Adigulu Prabhu, c'est de mont montrer la beauté et la hauteur de ces sentiments de séparation. Vipalamba Seva que le Seigneur Ram a manifesté à l'égard de Shri, de Shri Shrimati Sita Devi, hein, ce, ce caractère sublime de sentiment de séparation. C'est vrai, puisque à la fin du Lila, on le sait, il va même apparemment répudier. Lorsqu'elle sort, elle revient, elle a été... La guerre est finie, Ravan est tué, il va envoyer Lakshman chercher Sita dans, dans ce petite forêt de Ashok. Et là, c'est consternant comme histoire. C'est très consternant. Ma chère Sita, je t'ai sauvé. Tu es libre. Tu peux aller à ta guise. Tu peux partir. Imaginez l'effondrement. So I'm just bouncing off now. That to bounce off on your point. Uh, it's quite bewildering, this Vipralamba Seva, because we know the end of the Lila. When the battle took place, Ravan was duly, duly killed by Ram himself. Come the time of retrieving Sita, she has been forlorn and despondent, in a wretched condition, left alone, emaciated and pale in figure in that little ashram, Ashok, Ashok a grove. Lord Ram will tell Lakshman, please go, please go and get her. She's, she's going to be brought back, brought back, sorry, on foot. On foot. Ram didn't even arrange a palanquin. Everyone is flabbergasted. How could it be? Why Ram is so cruel? Even the demigods will, de will descend on the, on the spots. Lord Brahma will tell my dear Lord that this is your personal fine energy. It's high time you retrieve, you, you bring her within your fold. Ram is stern looking. He will ignore the whole, all the appeal of everyone. Even the demigods came. What did he want to show? Lakshman, you please light up a fire. <laughs> you light up a fire. And Sita was in tears. If I had known my Lord, my Lord, I would have left my body long ago. Lord Ram remained so stern. The fire is lit up. Lakshman is in tears. He's li lighting up a fire in which Mother Sita is going to enter. We know the story. 
she enters readily. Agni will come out the other, the other side of the fire, carrying the real Sita. Who had been stolen from day one by Ravan? Maya Sita. So you're right, Prabhu. Krishna wants, Lord Ram wants to show the divinity of Sita. She's not an ordinary woman. She can brave the fire. Donc voilà l'histoire dans son ensemble, c'est que le Seigneur Ram voulait absolument montrer la pureté, apparemment du fait qu'elle a vécu chez quelqu'un d'autre, chez un autre homme, elle est souillée d'entrée de jeu, puisque c'est la norme à l'époque védique, on le sait. Et donc il l'ignore apparemment, c'est très cruel de sa part, les demi-dieux descendent sur terre pour inciter Ram à, à revenir, à, à, ses propres, à, rêver, à, revenir à, à, à son bon sens. Ram reste fidèle à sa promesse, elle entre le feu, elle en ressort de l'autre côté, portée par Agnidev, c'est la véritable Sita. La Sita que l'on connaît, qui a été volée, kidnappée, c'est Maya Sita. C'est une fausse Sita, c'est un, un subside. <rire> So, yes, so we, are, we covered that point. Thank you, Prabhu, to put me on that track. There's another sub-point we should not ignore coming from Srila Prabhupada himself in that purport. Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. <laughs> well, you have to develop that also. Yes, Prabhu. <laughs> Exactly, exactly. It reminds me, Prabhu, when you go to, I'll tra translate very soon. When you go to MP, there's a temple, Madhya Pradesh, you see all types of erotic forms. I forget the name of the temple. And it's quite mind boggling, it's very erotic. And people will find fault with that. And exactly the same point behind, just to separate, to filter. Those who are pure enough will enter and figure out the Ishtadev of this temple is Vishnu. But if you are bewildered by all the depiction outside, you remain on that level and you just walk, walk away, figuring out, well, India is full of lust. See, it is to, comme on dit en français, séparer le blé de l'ivraie. Krishna is very sharp. He wants to filter out why the Lord Krishna left a mortal demise, a mortal body behind him. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasvati Thakur explained, to further bewilder the atheist. Exactly. It filters out. This is a very good point. Atmavan Manyate Jagat. We superimpose our shortcomings upon the plane of divinity. Atmavan Manyate Jagat. We superimpose. We project our plane of consciousness 
onto the plane of matter. Concluding that because I see like this, everyone must be seeing like this also, including God. <laughs> this is extremely dangerous. We are petty. What we see actually is a projection of our consciousness. Nothing more than this. We may write books. I've got a PhD for book. It's just a projection of your consciousness read in written form, isn't it? Donc, traduction. <laughs> Donc là, on a rebondi un petit peu un peu partout. Mais l'idée, c'est que commencer à commencer par Adigulu Prabhu, hein, l'idée, c'est Vipralamba Seva, montrer le caractère sublime de, cette, de ce sentiment de séparation envers le Seigneur et ses, ses compagnes éternelles, divines. C'est le senti sentiment ultime Vipralamba Seva. Et donc, il a montré ça. L'histoire, on la connaît, de la Maya Sita, qui, est, qui va disparaître dans ce feu et va réapparaître de l'autre côté, portée par Agnidev, la véritable Sita. Donc voilà, ça c'est clair. Après, un des, on dira un point, mais qui est quand même mentionné par Prabhupada, il ne faut pas l'ignorer, c'est pour montrer le fait aussi que, dès l'instant que l'on se marie, Également, dès l'instant qu'on emmène son épouse en voyage. Propre Didi. As soon as you take your wife in traveling, in travel, there may be, there may be difficulty. Because traveling is tough, especially in India, you know. So, better not, if possible, don't take her along. It's going to be more difficult. You have to take care of her, she's tired. You have to find food in the middle of the night. You have to find a bed for her. You have, You know, men can manage. We know that. We are a little rough and tough. Uncouth. We are uncouth. <laughs> Women are not uncouth. They need care. They need care. Uncouth, ça veut dire on est un petit peu brut de brut, comme on dit en français. On est un petit peu brut. Les hommes sont un peu coarse, on dit ça. Donc, une, une femme, ça a besoin de délicatesse, de de care, de soins. Donc c'est plus difficile en voyage. Propas dit explique ça. Et puis aussi, les, la, le, comment dirais-je, la, la réalité du mariage est telle que ce n'est pas tous les jours dimanche. <rire> il, y a, il y a des réalités qui sont là, des frictions entre, 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 entre époux et épouses. Ok, anything else yeah, yeah. Who? Vibhishan. Exactly. Wow, first class. Who, who said that, Shila Prabhupada? Yeah, no, I heard it from Rabbi Wow, that's a very good point. Uh, okay, you, you couldn't hear, Prabhu? Okay, so Prabhu said that, quoting Radhanath Maharaj, that actually the very fact that Ravan disguised himself as a sadhu, as a sannyasi, he has sullied the garb of a sannyasi, the reputation of a sannyasi. That itself has to be avenged by death. That's why Ravan was killed. No forgiveness. No forgiveness. Because he pretended, just like Indra Dev did the same actually. Indra Dev, remember when Prithu performed 100 Yagya? Indra Dev, out of fear for his position, he stole the horse. And then when Prithu, or even his son, I believe, tried to kill him, he changed himself as a sannyasi. Remember? Papa explained in the purport, did you notice? He said this is the beginning of Apasampadaya. This is the beginning of false spirituality. 
of full spirituality. <laughs> He's bouncing off now again. <laughs> He's saying, Arjun himself disguised as a sannyasi to get the hand of Subhadra. <laughs> Yes, but be careful, it's within the Lila. That's within the Krishna Lila. That's very intimate. See, Krishna consciousness, you, you, you are all grown up. There's many layers of understanding. Within the Lila itself, you find more layers. Now we're dealing with the apparent layers, the public layers of the Ramayana. Okay, ten minutes left. So... A few words on Janava Devi, Janava Ma, Janava, Ma, Janava Mataji, you know, however you want to call her. It's interesting, same day, did you notice? There's a connection, obviously. Sita Devi, concert of Lord Ram, Janava Ma, concert of Lord Nityananda. No wonder it is appearing on the same day, because they occupy the same position. It's Bhushakti. Yeah? So, she is one of the two ladies. Suryadas Sakar was the father of these two ladies. And you know the story how, how come Lodi Chananda he married also the second one? Her name is Vasuda. Vasuda. Huh? So, anyway, it was prearranged that. There was someone, some entreaty so that Lord Nityananda could marry her. I forgot the details here. Anyway, it was all settled. They're going to get married. They're getting married now. This is the feast and everything is extremely... The whole scene is gorgeous, a lot of opulence, festivities. Most of these participants are demigods themselves Vishnu Parikar, companion, eternal companions of the Lord. They're getting married, they're sitting next to each other. The feast is going on. The servants are serving the feast. And one of the ladies there is Vasudha. She's serving the feast also because her, her big sister is getting married. And when you serve the feast, both hands are occupied, isn't it? You hold the pot, you take from the pot and you serve. Can you imagine, this is 16th century India, ladies are very chaste. The sari is on the, on the head. But as she was serving Basuda, one, the sari got off her head, it, slow, it slid. Very quickly, in a spur of the moment, she manifested four arms to put it back on. No one saw, so fast. Only one person saw. Nitai. So he's getting married and he's saying, Oh, my dear father-in-law, I want to marry her also. <laughs> it's so, so sharp. <laughs> you understood? This is another Shakti of mine here. <laughs> So immediately the father-in-law complied. He said, yes, please have a sitter seated next to you, now the, the other side. On the spot she was given to Lord Nityananda. So, and it, it's hard to talk about three great personalities in such a short amount of time, especially translating also. A few words on Madhu Pandit. So, I have to translate, that's true. Donc, l'idée de Janavama, c'est la like, partenaire, enfin la partenaire, la, la compagne éternelle du Seigneur Nityananda. C'est tout à fait normal qu'aujourd'hui il y a Janava et Sita Devi, puisque c'est la même Shakti en fait. Hein. Une petite histoire, l'histoire est longue, mais là juste cette histoire parce qu'elle est inconnue de beaucoup. Lorsque le Seigneur Nityananda s'est marié à Janava, Ma, c'était la grande effervescence, ça a duré plusieurs jours, un mariage magistral. Magnifique, décoration partout, cuisine, jour et nuit. La fille arrive, ils sont assis côte à côte. Les serviteurs servent le prachad. Et bien sûr, la petite sœur Basuda sert aussi, puisque c'est le mariage de sa grande sœur. 
Et lorsqu'on sert, on a les deux mains occupées, n'est-ce pas On tient le pot et on sert. Elle a son sari. À un moment donné, le sari glisse. Mais je l'ai dit en anglais. Et donc, très rapidement, elle manifeste quatre mains. Elle manifeste quatre mains pour remettre son sari comme il faut. Personne ne l'a vu, tellement, ça dépasse l'entendement humain, c'est une vitesse inouïe. La seule personne qui l'a vu, c'est le Seigneur Nityananda. Et tout de suite, il a demandé au, au Père, Sakar, comment c'est son nom Surya Das Sakar. Sarkar. Can I please marry her also <laughs> He complied. Donc, Madhu Pandit is a pujari, a very great pujari, initiated by Gadada Pandit. After Lord Chaitanya depart, I mean depart, left his world uh, with the Panchatatwa and the Goswamis also, this great soul was there, initiated by Gadara Pandit. He was one of the main pujari in Vrindavan. If you go to Jaipur, I've been there, in encaged, or how do you say, it's totally inside inside the window, you see the Tulsi. It's a coat made of Tulsi twigs. Have you have seen it? It's amazing. <laughs> it's made of Tulsi twigs. And they have made a coat out of it. And that was the coat of Madhu Pandit. He used to wear that coat, made of Tulsi twigs, intertwined, making the coat. So he was a great Acharya, a great Pujari in those days. One of the main Pujari. Donc voilà, c'était un Pujari initié par Gadara Pandit. Et on peut voir, son, il avait un habit, qui est, on peut le voir à Jaipur, fait de tout l'acide, de brindis de tout l'acide, qui ont été entremêlés ensemble. Et ça en a fait un, un vêtement qui portait, un vêtement fait de tout l'acide. Voilà. Thank you very much, dear Prabhupada. Yeah, I forgot. Yeah, I, I can, I mean, I've got the, the, you please, yeah, okay, so thank you for that. Yeah. All the deities of Rindavan were hidden, and after that they reinstalled Pratibhu deities. Pratibhu means substitute deities in Vrindavan, except for two. For two deities which are original in Vrindavan. There's two original deities in Vrindavan. Never, they were never substituted. Can you please tell us? <laughs> One is Tulasi, Tulasi Devi, and Radharaman. The Tulasi Kambiavan. And the, the Shishi Radharaman deity, that's the original. It's not pretty blue. Yeah, Rinda Devi. And Dauji Balaram. Ah, okay, see, that's right. <laughs> Thank you, Prabhu. <laughs> Donc, en fait, on va finir là-dessus parce que c'est l'heure. Toutes les murtis à Vrindavan sont Pratibhu, ce sont des murtis de remplacement qui ont été installés parce que les Moghuls ont attaqué, fut un temps, et il fallait cacher en vitesse ces murtis. Souvenez-vous que les Moghuls faisaient des marches d'escalier avec les murtis. Il ne faut pas oublier. Donc, on, on, on se plaint que c'est difficile à l'heure actuelle, mais c'est de la rigolade par rapport à l'époque. Les dévots se faisaient tuer. Les mortiers étaient massacrés pour en faire des marches d'escalier. Donc, il faut remettre les choses dans le contexte. C'est pour ça qu'à Brindavan, tout est pratibou. Et il y a une autre raison aussi. Parce que les gens, après le turmoil du Mughal Empire, quand les dévotés dans Brindavan demandent pour les dévotés de retour, ces nouveaux sadhus qui ont été pris, qui ont été donnés un abri, to the deities. For centuries now, they've been worshipping. They wouldn't give them back. <laughs> like when Shishirada Govind in Jaipur was asked for to move, be moved back to Jaipur, to Vrindavan, they never complied. They said, no way. We've been worshipping him for 200 years. You see, we're going to give him. 
So they had to reinstall Pratibu <laughs> also for that reason. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much. Jai Shri Janavama Ki. Shri Sita Devi Ki. Jai Shri Madhu Pandit Ki Jai. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.